Hey guys, King Gath here with another patch for Sim Settlements. This is patch 3.5.0, which I'm calling Modestential Crisis. And I'm going to get into why that patch is why this patch is called that shortly. I'm just going to forewarn you guys, just like the last patch video, this is going to be a lot of talking because there is a lot of information to cover. It seems that Sim Settlements is very good at finding the limitations of what this game engine can actually handle. Uh, and so we discovered a pretty harsh limit of the game engine, and I'm going to go into that in a minute. But first, I want to talk about what this patch does so that those of you guys who don't care about the the background of this can move on with your day so this patch does two big things one is it removes the complex city plans from the main mod and puts them in their own ESL files and that's because I think most of you are using the optimized plans anyway so I was able to shave about 20 mags off of the mod by doing that but really the reason for doing that has to do with this limitation I'll describe later then the second thing this patch does is I separated out the take back city option into two options. So now you can independently dismiss city leaders or remove the city plan. Previously, there was just an option called take back city, which would do both. Now, the, the benefit to separating these is that if you want to get your companion back, for example, but you don't want to lose your progress on your current city plan, you don't have to just change your city leader anymore. You can now dismiss the city leader, which will essentially pause the city plan until you assign somebody new, and then you can assign somebody new when you're ready. So the, the real benefit to that is if you're in the early game when you don't have a lot of city leaders available and you just want to get one of your companions back without having to assign somebody else, you don't have to also remove the city plan. So that's a nice way to do that. Now, if you do want to just remove the city plan and keep the leader, you can also do that. Um, when you remove the city plan, essentially it leaves everything that's there. So for example, I have this foundation level of Murkwater. If I remove the city plan, everything will still stay here, but uh, the city won't continue to progress. So nothing else will be built. I have full control from here, but I can keep this foundation and do whatever I want with it. So uh, now you have those, you have additional options. So if that's all you're interested in and what the patch does, that's essentially it. You can go about your day. But for those of you who are interested in the science of this or the actual reasoning for why the heck I would remove anything from some settlements, uh, we're going to go into the talky part because there is a lot to discuss here. So there are four points I want to discuss here. One is I want to explain the limitation to you guys. Um, two is I'm going to put out a plea to people such as the F4SC team to find a solution for this. Um, three is I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do about this limitation in, as the future of some settlements goes. And then four is I want to talk about the special harshness of this problem for Xbox players. Now, I'm probably going to do them in a little bit different order than what I just mentioned, but those are the things I want to talk about. So first, let's start off with the baseline, which is what is this limitation? So it turns out there is a 64 meg script data limit. So what does that mean exactly? Well, essentially, when you try and load a game, Fallout 4 will analyze all of the mods you have installed and tally up how much, how much data they're storing for their scripts in the ESP files. If it passes 64 megs, the game just hangs. Now I imagine that this is something Bethesda didn't intend, but I don't think they ever intended this limit to even get close to being hit. Because if you look at all of the vanilla game, all of the DLC and all of the Creation Club content combined, it uses less than four megs of script data but they don't like to push the envelope like we do in the community. And some settlements especially takes heavy advantage of the ability of ESPs to store data for scripts. So the 64 meg limit locks out your game from loading. And that's a big problem, especially for Xbox players, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, but uh, what essentially it means is we're going to have to develop some new tools in the community because right now there's no way to really measure how much script data is being stored. I had to do it through a very painful process of measuring out uh, hex data inside of individual plugin files until I figured out what the limit was uh, and eventually got to that 64 megs. And I've since developed several mods that have exactly that amount of script data in them to prove the point. I've sent off a pack of uh, mods and information to both Bethesda and the F4SE team in hopes that one or the other or both will find a solution to this because it's a big problem. You shouldn't be able to be locked out of the game uh, because the mods you happen to install arbitrarily hit some, some data limit that doesn't actually matter because when you're actually playing the game, you can create basically unlimited script data 
and it doesn't cause the game to stop loading and it doesn't cause the game to break in any way. I mean, there are certain exceptions. You can definitely push it so high that your, your computer doesn't have enough memory to load the game. But in general, the 64 meg limit is fairly arbitrary. Uh, there's nothing that prevents the game from creating additional script data after the fact. So to me, that doesn't make a lot of sense that it should be a problem when you're trying to load the game. So uh, presumably the limit is just some sort of memory allocation that Bethesda decided on. Now, if you are, if you have the ear of somebody on the F4SC team and you want to talk about with this, this with them and try and convince them to pursue it, so far I haven't seen a lot of traction, but I have no idea what they're working on, so I can't expect them to drop everything and approach this, but it is something that we need to be concerned with. And let me explain why I think this is a big deal. To me, this represents kind of the early computing days when people would say things like, why would you ever need more than 64 kilobytes of memory? And now here we are with 64 gigabytes of memory in some computers or more, and some of us probably think we could push the limit on that. Is that essentially, once you start introducing these arbitrary caps, you limit the potential of what we can do. So I found a very, what I think is a clever use of script data, and I use it to store arbitrarily gigantic arrays of data that I can use to quickly uh, pull off things like placing city plans. So script data generally is used for to keep things like records of, say for example, you want your script to know about a particular piece. So say I want it to know about these stairs or I want it to know about a chair or something, then you can point it to that particular piece of data from Fallout 4. Uh, well, instead, I found you can also just use it to store things like numbers. And I started storing gigantic amounts of numbers, tens of thousands of numbers, and was able to pull off things like the city plans. It's a very powerful feature because the game actually processes script stored data incredibly fast. Now, obviously, there are ways I can do other things. I can come up with convoluted ways to store this data. In other ways, uh, we've discussed things like storing all of the items in a temporary cell and then copying them over to the game world later on, but that would be incredibly slow. It would be far, far slower than the current method we have. So I think that while yes, I can come up with solutions and yes, I'm going to pursue solutions, I think the real solution here is finding a way to bypass this arbitrary limitation because otherwise we're essentially putting a cap on what we can do with Fallout 4. Now, one of the other reasons to do this outside of just talking about the cap is for user convenience. Right now, you're going to have to start considering how much script property data your mods are using. Well, almost every mod that's out has uses some amount of script data and measuring that is going to require some special tools. So now we're going to have to cre create special tools in the community and it's going to be ha have to be something that you arbitrarily add up yourself. Perhaps we can get loot to do this automatically, but again, it's just more inconvenience. It's already inconvenient that we have to limit ourselves to 255 mods, but now to have to be considering this kind of meta information about mods and determining what we can install, it's really unfortunate and goes against, I think, everything that people who like to mod enjoy, which is we like to uncap these limits and do what we want. So I think there are plenty of arguments for why this needs to be resolved, why we need a more permanent solution and a way to bypass this limitation. So let's talk about what the limitation means for Xbox players, which gets a little more serious. So for Xbox players, if you hit this limit, you essentially have to go into your Xbox storage and delete all your mod data and start over. And for some of you, if you're not using cloud storage for your saves, that even means wiping out your save files. That's a huge, huge problem. Now, fortunately, it's very hard to hit this because it only happens in a particular way. And that's if you update a mod that, and that mod is the one that pushes you over the data limit then you're locked out of your game. Otherwise, if you just download a new mod and you go over the limit, that mod can never actually be activated because it'll get you'll get stuck in that loading screen before your plugins list actually gets updated. So it's not like you have to worry about downloading new mods. What you actually have to worry about are updating existing mods, especially mods like Sim Settlements, which have a lot of script data in them. And that's a problem. You should not have to be afraid to download bug fix 
prices. And so I've laid all this out for Bethesda. I even in solidarity broke my own Xbox to prove the point. So I've got my Xbox currently in that state where I can't play Fallout 4. Uh, it broke based on me updating a mod. I posted a mod uh, that had a little bit of script data, updated it to push me over the limit, downloaded the update, bam, my Xbox locked out. I just wanted to prove the point to Bethesda. Uh, and so I sacrificed my Xbox for you guys, which I don't use cloud data storage. So I lost all my save files in the process, but you know, that's what, so that's what we gotta do for science sometimes. Um, so for Xbox players, this is a very big problem. And that leads me to the final point I want to talk about, which is what am I going to do about this problem for Sim Settlements? So Sim Settlements being the biggest usage, user of script property data, but by no means the only, and I don't think it will be the last to use it as fervently as I do. So Sim Settlements uses a ton of it, but that was just, I'm just one of the first people to discover how fast and powerful it is. And I'm sure as the life of Fallout 4 modding progresses, we will see more cool, awesome, gigantic mods that try and make heavy use of this really powerful feature. And eventually we're going to get to a point where we just can't use certain mods together. And that's, again, another argument for why we need to find a way past this limitation. So what am I doing in some settlements? Well, this 3.5.0 patch, I have eliminated 20 megs worth of script data. So that's a lot. That's almost 30% of your total limit. Uh, actually, it's a little more than that. I don't know. Somebody out there will do the math. But it's a, a big chunk of that limit. So that means you can safely upgrade from 3.45 or 3.46 to 3.50 on Xbox. What you're going to be concerned with is going forward every time I release a new patch. Now that I've given you that warning, you're going to be afraid to update. And you should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to optimize more data. So my goal is to, every time I add new content to some settlements, I really, I remove a equal amount of script data somewhere else to make up for it so that you guys on Xbox can safely update. But I'm only going to be able to do that for so long. I found a lot of data I can optimize, especially in the city plans that are still in the mod for the optimized versions. There's a lot of script data I can cut from them to continue to buy space and buy time. But eventually I'm going to hit a hard cap where you guys can't safely update anymore. So with that in mind, my goal is to lay out a final bunch of content for Xbox. So it's going to take me a couple of months to get to there, but uh, essentially some settlements on Xbox is going to come to a close uh, as far as new content comes, unless Bethesda comes up with a solution to this problem. So um, if you would like to see a solution to this problem, I highly recommend you on Xbox go complain to Bethesda about this limitation. Talk about your experiences with getting locked out of your Xboxes, about how you suddenly get can't get into the mods or creation club screen anymore or even load a game unless you delete all of your mod data. So if you've actually experienced that, you should definitely complain. Um, but uh, I, I would... I don't recommend trying to force it in order to generate a complaint. But if you hit it, you need to go uh, voice your concern to Bethesda. They're still actively patching Fallout 4 in order to get out Creation Club content. So there's no way they can claim they're not doing this. I have given them all of the information they need to fix this issue. But I don't think they're going to move unless there's a proper amount of fan pressure, which I don't even know if they'll get right now, given that 76 is their big priority right now, which who can? I can't blame them. They have a new game to move forward on. But if they want to continue to monetize the existing games, they do need to support them and right now we have a pretty big crisis for you guys so my current plan is i have a few more pieces of major content in mind uh, for some settlements in the 3.x line of patches and i'm going to continue to work on that over the coming months but eventually we're going to end the 3.x line and um, the 4.x line of some settlements likely will not be available as an update on Xbox it will essentially have to be a new mod, um, but we'll get into all those details later. But essentially I have to find a way to prevent Xbox players from locking themselves out by updating some settlements. So that's a big problem. It's something I'm going to be working on very, very carefully. So obviously that's going to slow down development a little bit, but I don't want anybody to have their all of their save files wiped out due to this silly limitation of the game engine. Now, unfortunately, on Xbox, we absolutely have to have this fix from Bethesda. We can't get it from F4SE, um, but I'm hopeful for PC players. This limitation is just temporary until somebody in the community solves it. And once again, I'll put out that call. If you know somebody on the F4SE team, or if you yourself know how to do reverse engineering of software and would like to work on this problem, please contact me. I would love to give you the files and information you need to pursue this because that's unfortunately just way beyond my skill set. I am a, I am a programmer, but uh, I've just never got into that low level of stuff. I've, I was trained on web programming. So I, the stuff I know is 
is a lot higher in concept than than this sort of low level level programming and i tried my hand at it for quite a few days uh once we discovered this problem and i wasn't making any any notable progress and if i'm going to also maintain these mods i can't be allowing myself to be distracted on these side of things when there are plenty of people in the community who are very very good at this stuff who should be kind of pursuing that so kind of want to uh st ever let everybody stick to their roles in this particular situation so to recap um People who are good at reverse engineering, please try and solve this uh, for everybody else and particularly Xbox players. I am going to do everything in my power to reduce the data footprint of some settlements. I'm going to be reducing not only some settlements itself, but all of the add-on pack type things like the city plan contest pack and the mega pack. I'm going to be reducing the size of their usage and I'm going to be helping add-on pack authors and city plan authors to reduce the size of theirs as well. And if you are a city plan author, author if you've released a city plan i have already updated the online tool so that it will optimize your builds going forward so well, excuse me if you have an existing city plan and you want to update it to take advantage of this new optimized feature to reduce the file size simply re-upload your json files and rebuild your city plan all of the things will match up perfectly the the form ids will match up so you people can update safely to your new version and they will gain back that script data usage uh, but yeah, that's a lot of information. This is a problem I never anticipated. I'd be the one to discover because I never consider myself pushing the envelope on mod development. I tend to prefer to stand on the shoulders of giants and um, let the awesome folks out there in the community figure out the hard stuff. And then I come in and just build the easy mods. <laughs> but uh, anyway, guys, uh, thank you for your time. And uh, I hope we can solve this problem together. Uh, again, Xbox players, you can safely download 3.5.0 because this removes script data. And then in the future, all some settlements updates will remove a commiserate amount of data so that you don't have to worry about updating the mod to trigger that problem for yourselves. Um, I imagine we will see a, some tools in the, in the very near future to help manage this limit now that everybody knows about it. All right, guys, take care and enjoy the mod.